Hi, welcome back. I am Dr. Sridhar. I hope you have subscribed to the channel. If not, please do subscribe and I request you to like the video so that the YouTube algorithm reaches it to more people and do share it with your colleagues because these are small practical videos which should help. Uh, one of you had asked uh, about uh, details of ventilation perfusion mismatch. So it's a vast topic, but I'm going to summarize it in brief. So to understand it, we should understand that gas exchange in the lung needs ventilation, which brings oxygen to the alveoli and takes the carbon dioxide away from the alveoli as part of the gas exchange. And we need perfusion, which brings the blood flow, uh, which ultimately allows the gas exchange. So this is the uh, airway, the terminal and respiratory bronchiole, the alveolus, which has the air inside. You can imagine that this is the uh, pulmonary arteriole and the pulmonary venule. So the arteriole is uh, going to bring the deoxygenated blood and uh, obviously the capillary network is there on surface of the alveolus. So the alveolar capillary membrane is part of this uh, capillary uh, network and the deoxygenated blood is coming through the arteriole. It is taken up, uh, the oxygen is taken up and it becomes oxygenated. The carbon dioxide is diffusing into the alveoli. So basically the oxygen is taken from the alveoli into the uh, pulmonary arteriolar capillary interface and the venule uh, and the pulmonary vein eventually reaches the left atrium for the circulation. So don't be confused by arteriole versus venule in the opposite direction because this is the lung circulation and obviously the pulmonary arteries are bringing deoxygenated blood to the lungs and the pulmonary veins carry the oxygenated blood to the atrium. So this is a summary of how the gas exchange takes place. And this uh, image which has been taken from blogspot.com uh, illustrates uh, what we mean by ventilation perfusion mismatch. So this can happen either because your ventilation is not there, your circulation is happening, um, and it can also happen because the ventilation is uh, carrying on but the circulation is not effective. So uh, either of these can be affected. So the ventilation perfusion mismatch can occur because of failed ventilation or because of a failed perfusion. And in situations like a lung disease with shock, you may have a combination of these factors. And also remember that different parts of the lung may have different uh, features. So the dependent portion of the lung uh, may have uh, a higher perfusion with lower ventilation while uh, uh, like for example, the upper lobe of the lung may have a better uh, ventilation compared to perfusion. So uh, this is the alveolus which is not ventilated. So the, there is no uh, gas exchange happening. So the blood that is coming through is poorly oxygenated uh, and then it mixes together with the better oxygenated blood. So this is a right to left intrapulmonary shunt. And in this case, uh, either because of a congenital anomaly or because the blood vessel is obstructed uh, for whatever reason, uh, because of relative local hypoxia, again, that may be a uh, part reflex vasoconstriction which happens with PPHN. So multiple factors can contribute to a low blood flow. Here the alveolus is having the oxygen but the uh, blood flow is not coming through so the oxygenated blood is coming through uh, but the uh, reduction in oxygenation happens with the overall oxygen content dropping so this again leads to uh, physiologic dead space because the uh, oxygen is there in the alveoli but it is not getting, uh, it's not taking part in the gas exchange. If this happens over a large surface of the lung, you may have problems with the CO2 retention as well. So this illustrates how, uh, suppose you have a portion of the lung which has a reduced ventilation as illustrated by this narrowing. Uh, your uh, ventilation is low and the perfusion is normal. So in this case, the oxygen delivery to the, uh, it comes from the venous end with the oxygen of 14.6 and then it becomes 16. It doesn't reach the maximum because the gas is less. In the normal ventilated alveoli, obviously the gas uptake is good. So it becomes 19.5. And then in the uh, alveolus where the vessel is blocked, the gas doesn't get oxygenated. So ultimately combining these, uh, the total arterial oxygen content becomes low. And remember that uh, PPHN is uh, predisposed by hypoxia, which causes reflex pulmonary vasoconstriction as well. And uh, this is one of the factors that can precipitate PPHN uh, ventilation perfusion mismatch. Uh, again, it's a vast topic, so I just have a few tips. Uh, we should focus on good lung recruitment. Uh, homogeneous lungs are much easier to ventilate for the same reason because the ventilation perfusion mismatch is reduced. 
However, not all of it is in our hands because non-homogeneous lung disease will have a non-homogeneous pattern obviously. But uh, we should try uh, our best to position the baby appropriately. Uh, for example, if a baby has a collapse, the lung should be positioned, the collapsed lung should be on the uh, upper side. You turn the baby sideways. Uh, with the pneumothorax, you may want to keep the side uh, dependent uh, so that the other lung is able to open up better. Uh, the airway patency matters, so uh, humidification, suction, good nursing care, these are very important as well. Uh, regular position changes will help as well and head and elevation is uh, likely to help to reduce the risk of reflux and other issues as well. So focus on maintaining the perfusion by maintaining blood pressure and uh, fluid status should be reviewed. And uh, we should review the factors that can lead to right to left shunting like hypoxia, acidosis, uh, infection and so on and correct them as well. So again, as I said, this is not a detailed uh, lecture on ventilation perfusion. This is just to give you an idea of what it is and how you can manage to some extent. I hope it helps and do share.